Welcome to our channel with a new video. I'm sure by now you must be aware or at least heard of the evil Chinese Communist Party. If not, it is the founding and ruling political party of the People's Republic of China. It is the only governing party within central China, allowing only eight other subordinated parties to coexist, those making up the combined front. The CCP does not have any beliefs and principles, and that the party is practical and interested only in what works in their interest. The CCP requires every Chinese company, resident, and even U.S. companies running in China to abide by local intelligence and security laws. It has a control over every aspect of society in China and is involved in a program of unrestricted warfare to replace the United States to become the world's sole superpower. All technology coming out of China, either manufactured or created in China, is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. Moving on, in this video we will discuss how it influences the world's largest smartphone producer in the world, Huawei and the sixth largest social network in the world, TikTok to take control over personal data of the entire world's population. Yeah, you heard it right. So first, let's start with Huawei. The second largest smartphone maker in the world after Samsung, Huawei is no simple private competitor to other tech firms around the world. Huawei has been supported by China's ruling Communist Party and military through low-interest loans and protected access to the domestic market. China has also continually declared that all Chinese companies, private or not, must aid the government with gathering intelligence. Under Chinese law, all companies and residents must support, help with, and collaborate in national intelligence effort and guard the national intelligence work secrets they are privy to. Huawei's structure looks extremely similar to the party. Each is run by a senior group of seven officials, with relationships even further down the line. Huawei calls its management training program its Central Party School, which is exactly the name of the Communist Party institution that trains talented cadres. When it comes to loyalty building and team building, Mr. Ren Zhengfei, founder of Huawei Technologies, turned to the party's method of self-criticism, in which cadres confess to their offenses. Self-criticism periods are called democratic life meetings just like the party. Huawei also regularly holds ceremonies for its executives, from the board down, to pledge honesty and integrity, much as the party does. Mr. Ren, a former military engineer, also pervades Huawei with a militant culture. He occasionally refers to major business deals as a battle for Triangle Hill, an indication of a clash during the Korean War that included Chinese and American troops. It is clear that, in effect, it is a state-owned organization under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. Like all trade union committees in China, Huawei Investment Holdings Trade Union Committee is a so-called mass organization. The trade union committee is under the party-controlled All-China Federation of Trade Unions ACTU, whose workforce is civil servants serving government interests and party. The head of the ACTU, which eventually owns the governing stake in Huawei, is a vice chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress. This is China's party-controlled parliament, which happens once a year to validate decisions and new laws issued by the party apparatus in observance of parliamentary window dressing. Irrespective of the ownership model, the party has anyway always forced its oversight in all large Chinese companies, guaranteeing that they faithfully perform party instructions, make all their staff study XI Jinping thought, and offer access to data for public governors. In other words, Huawei is not a private company, and the CCP has focused all companies to follow the party. Another key question is whether Huawei works with Chinese security and intelligence agencies. In fact, Huawei has a long history of close relations with Chinese security and intelligence. Huawei founder Mr. Ren Zhengfei was a senior officer of the People's Liberation Army PLA. As many as 10% or more of Huawei staffs have a military or intelligence background. Its chief legal officer even received his PhD in electronics from a PL, a university, where many other employees and executives also got their degrees. Chinese law is very clear that Chinese firms must follow intelligence and information collecting requests made by government officials. The law allows the state access to all data detained by Chinese firms and foreign firms operating in China at all times. Despite Huawei saying that it would put down such requests, Chinese law requires Huawei network managers to gather and hand over data when ordered to do so. 
Since Huawei origin in the 1990s, the Chinese state has supported Huawei with soft loans for development, customer finance, research grants, reported to some to over $75 billion, and invitations to form joint businesses with local governments and Chinese telecoms carriers on dear terms. Huawei has also been involved in partnerships with PL, a universities to research on encryption, networks, Wi-Fi, and 5G. The organization has been held and sued in the USA for stealing intellectual property and technical data from competitors. Huawei keeps extensive databases on foreign individuals and companies, including data that should not be in its records at all. UK and Czech cyber evaluation centers have determined that Huawei network products include security threats. Their report states Huawei mobiles measurably cause a high risk to their customers. In virtually all groups we studied, we found Huawei devices to be less safe than comparable devices from other sellers it said. We understood there were hundreds of incidents of possible backdoor weaknesses apart from working for the Chinese Communist Party to build data and surveillance networks. Huawei has also aided the governments of other authoritarian states, such as Iran and North Korea, to build mobile networks and an exploitive surveillance and censoring service. In this area, it is fair to say that the Chinese Communist Party influenced Huawei in involving in the destruction of human rights, for example, through involvement in Xinjiang in the isolated northwest of China, where Muslim Uyghur people are regularly abused and oppressed. Chinese Communist Party took the help of Huawei in developing facial recognition surveillance and population monitoring tools in the region. Even Chinese people have no love for Huawei. In recent months, the organization received a stream of social media abuse from Chinese netizens over workshop labor practices and the victimization of litigants complaining of abuse as its employees. All in all, this organization is no right partner for an open and free society under democracy and the rule of law. The UK, like other such countries, recognized to be a target of the Chinese Communist Party's global spying and influence campaign. Huawei is part of its effort to overturn the current world order. Now let's come down to the TikTok. TikTok, the short video app that's been downloaded 1.5 billion times by the time I'm creating this video, is one of the most exciting and craziest places on the internet. It is also based in China, and that's the part that has some customers, and now, politicians, concerned. Over two years, TikTok, where under 60-second videos often feature inside jokes, bizarre memes, and bite-sized sketch comedy, has become the defining social media app of Generation Z around the world including US, India, and Europe. If you've ever used the well-known app TikTok, then the personal data from your mobile, like contacts, browsing history, messages, and your location, could have been taken by the Chinese Communist Party. Whether you understand or not, this app is silently downloading your private information. If you are one of the over 500 million individuals around the world using TikTok, your information is at risk. TikTok has come under powerful scrutiny after the Trump administration confirmed that it was considering a ban on TikTok and other Chinese apps on security grounds. Critics warned that the app could be used as a spying tool for the Chinese Communist Party CCP, and customers' content could be censored if the party believes them politically sensitive. The organization has denied these accusations and sought to void itself from its Beijing owner, pointing to its American board members and new chief executive. It says its servers are located in the Singapore and United States, and that it would not share user data with the Chinese Communist Party if requested. Chinese security laws force companies to cooperate with intelligence agencies when asked. CEO of intelligence and security strategy firm Black Ops Partners, Casey Fleming, defined TikTok's statement that it could simply refuse to comply with such laws as propaganda and gaslighting. An associate professor specializing in cyber law and digital ethics at Adelphi University, Mark Grabowski, labeled TikTok as Chinese government malware masquerading as a social media app. He noted that the TikTok privacy policy is extensive, allowing it to collect and access vast swathes of information on a user's phone. It collects a variety of data including a user's geolocation data, web browsing history, and what other apps a user is running. In 2014, Gary Malivsky, a cybersecurity expert and publisher of Cyber Defense magazine, determined that many of the top mobile flashlight apps in the Google Play Store were devised by cybercriminals or linked to China and Russia. In the case of one of those apps, he discovered that it was turning on the user's microphone and connecting to servers in Beijing. He believes TikTok is a scaled-up form of these flashlight apps. Governments and companies have started taking action against the app. 
In June India banned TikTok and 58 other Chinese apps, saying they posed threats to the nation's security and sovereignty. Last December, the Pentagon ordered military personnel to delete TikTok from government devices. U.S. lawmakers in March announced a bill to bar federal employees from using the app on government-issued phones. Wells Fargo recently ordered employees to remove TikTok, while the Democratic and Republican national committees have alerted their staff against using the app. Meanwhile, a U.S. panel is running a national security review of Biden's $1 billion acquisition of social media app Musical.ly which was rebranded to TikTok in 2017. In 2019, TikTok paid a $5.7 million fine to settle U.S. government charges that it had illicitly collected personal information from users under the age of 13 in disruption of child privacy laws. Federal agencies are now looking into whether the company has complied with this agreement, according to Reuters. South Korea recently fined TikTok over similar privacy violations. Elements of the activist hacking group Anonymous also recently turned its notice on the social media app. A Twitter account connected to the group published on 1st July, delete TikTok now, if you know someone that is using it, explain to them that it is essentially malware operated by the Chinese government, running a massive spying operation. The tweet shared a Reddit post by an engineer who said to have reverse engineered the app and discovered that it was collecting a huge amount of personal information, much more than other social media apps like Facebook and Twitter, and went to great extents to hide this. It seems that TikTok does an extreme amount of tracking on its users and that the data collected is partly if not fully stored on Chinese servers with the internet service provider Alibaba. Personal data collected by TikTok and other Chinese apps are being absorbed into big data and worn with artificial intelligence by the Chinese Communist Party. This huge pool of information can then be tapped into to carry out political or economic espionage. Among the tens of millions of young TikTok customers in America, many are targets that the Chinese Communist Party is keen to mole on or exploit for blackmail. These include engineers of Silicon Valley, research lab deputies, congressional staffers, and journalists. They possibly have access to sensitive government, industry and R&D information. Mentioning the Chinese government's actions over the past six months, including its cover-up of the Chinese Communist Party virus outbreak, application of draconian security law in Hong Kong, and growing violence in the South China Sea and towards Taiwan, do these activities speak to you as a trusted technology partner? Let us know in the comments below. So that's it from our side. Also, make sure to leave us a like, share this video with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel for more great content like today. We hope you enjoyed our video, and we'll see you next time.